Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surround School Down School Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be doing a lesson on pressure and temperature. So put down today's title, it's going to be pressure and temperature. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Right, let's get straight into it. Okay, so hopefully you have an idea about how gas pressure works. I've drawn like a box over here, actually a, vo a box of fixed volume, and inside it there is a gas. Hopefully you can identify that uh, inside uh, the particles are moving in random directions, they're colliding with the walls of the container. Every time they collide with the walls of the container, they exert a force. That force will be acting upon uh, area, yes? And obviously you should recognize that pressure is equal to force divided by area. So as there are forces uh, hitting the wall divided by an area, therefore the gas exerts a pressure on the container. Let's put that down. Here we are, particles collide with the wall, they exert a force as they collide with the walls. Obviously, that's an area, and therefore, hence, the gas exerts a pressure. Right, so we have an idea that gases exert a pressure, yes, due to this principle, but what happens if you were to increase the temperature of the gas? Okay, so let's say we were to heat up the gas, what would happen is the particles would move faster. The particles would gain kinetic energy, they would therefore travel faster, Therefore, there will be more collisions per second with the walls of the container and therefore the pressure will increase. And there we go, guys. Particles gain kinetic energy. There are more collisions per second with the walls of the container and therefore the pressure increases. So I'm going to put this over here. We can therefore say that uh, pressure, we can say, is proportional to the temperature. Okay, so temperature over here. Yes, so as you increase the temperature, the pressure increases. And obviously, by symmetry, if you were to decrease the temperature, the pressure would also decrease. Okay, now let's try and plot a graph uh, for pressure versus temperature, and let's see what we get. Okay, right, in order to do this, I've also drawn three balloons over here to help you understand the problem. So let's say there are three identical balloons. One of them you place in the freezer, so this one is placed in the freezer, hence why it cools down to zero degrees Celsius. One's at room temperature over here, and another one you're going to place, let's say, um, uh, you're going to place it on top of a radiator. Yeah, so in, uh, let's put it in a hot room over here. Yeah, 60 degrees Celsius. Right, so first of all, if we were to talk about the pressure inside the balloon, so don't forget there's particles inside the balloon over here, yes, which are moving around over here. At zero degrees Celsius, there is still some pressure. So at zero degrees Celsius, there is still some pressure over here. At 25 degrees Celsius, obviously, there'll be a greater pressure than at zero degrees Celsius, so it'll be over here. Oh, I've got, let's put zero degrees Celsius at the bottom of this over here. So zero degrees Celsius, okay, we've got this value over here. And then at 60 degrees Celsius, we know that you've increased the temperature, the pressure will increase. Right, so let's draw a line of best fit through these values over here. There we go, imagine that's a straight line. There we have it, over here. So you might be thinking, hang on a minute, didn't you say pressure is proportional to temperature earlier on? Well, not quite right now, because the graph is slightly a bit weird. We can actually find out which temperature will the pressure drop down to zero. Which temperature will the pressure drop down to zero? So if I was to just extend this line over here, let's say I extend this line all the way outwards over here. Don't forget these are negative numbers now. And then if I was to then extrapolate this line all the way down, there we go over here, we can actually find out this temperature at which the pressure inside the balloon is zero. Right, this value is actually going to be minus 273 degrees Celsius. Minus 273 degrees Celsius. This temperature at which the pressure is zero, this is known as absolute zero. So let's put that over here, let's circle that. So let's put that over here. Minus 273 degrees Celsius is equal to absolute zero. Um, some people like to call it the true zero, yeah, if you want. And that's when the kinetic energy of the particles is zero. Kinetic energy of particles is zero. Excellent stuff here. Right, now, from here, we can do something quite cool. We can now try and get a graph which goes through the origin. But... Obviously, we're going to have to use a different type of unit. So up to this point, you've been talking about temperature in terms of degrees Celsius. We are now going to introduce a new type of unit for temperature. It's called Kelvin. So Kelvin is an alternative unit of temperature. And you can convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin using the following formula. Right, so the way we do it is the following. 
minus 273 degrees Celsius, this is known as zero Kelvin, zero Kelvin, zero and then the K here, not okay, zero Kelvin over here. Right, so now we can now try and plot this graph. We can have a new graph right now and look, this graph is different. On the x-axis, I'm gonna put temperature and this one's going to be in Kelvin and this one's going to be pressure. Yes, still measured in Pascal. Yes, in Pascal over here. Right, so at zero Kelvin, we know that the pressure is going to be zero. There we go. And now look, we have this kind of graph here. And now we can say, guys, that pressure is directly proportional to temperature in Kelvin. So there we go. We now have the following relationship that pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. Yes, and I'm going to put in brackets if it's measured in Kelvin over here, if it's measured in Kelvin. If you use degrees Celsius, it won't be proportional. But now, guys, because we're using Kelvin over here, we can say that at zero Kelvin, the pressure will be zero. Right, so you might be wondering, hang on a minute, how do I convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin? It is a very simple thing. We're going to take, um, so minus 273, minus 273 degrees Celsius, that is known as being equal to zero Kelvin over here. Okay, so this is going to be our starting point. Minus 273 degrees Celsius is known as zero Kelvin over here. Right, if you want to convert any value from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you simply add 273. Simply add 273. And if you want to convert Kelvin to degrees Celsius, all you simply got to do is subtract 273 from the value. Okay, so some of you might struggle with that, so let's do a couple of practice calculations. All right, so here we have a table of degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Let's convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So first of all, I simply add 273. So 25 plus 273, my value is going to be 298, yes, over here. If I have 30 degrees Kelvin, how much is that going to be in terms of degrees Celsius? So I simply subtract 273 from this value, so it's going to be minus 243 degrees Celsius. If I have minus 5 degrees Celsius, it's convert it, so minus 5, I simply plus 273, I'm going to get the value of 268. And the last one, guys, I subtract it, 280 minus 273, I'm going to get the value of 7. 7 degrees Celsius is the same as 280 Kelvin. Fantastic stuff. So hopefully that now puts it all into context in which we can have a graph of pressure versus temperature with temperature within degrees Celsius, just the graphics like this. If I extrapolate the line backwards, the true zero, which the particles have zero kinetic energy, this is called absolute zero. And this is the starting point for the Kelvin scale over here, zero Kelvin over here. Fantastic stuff. Okay, now from here, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at pressure versus temperature in Kelvin. We're going to look at this graph one more time. So, okay, so we've got the following statement. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature over here. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And look, we end up with the following graph. Notice that my x-axis is in Kelvin, hence why it's going through the origin directly proportional. Right, so hopefully you can identify that um, these variables are proportional, so therefore you could almost say that there's a constant here. So we can say that P is proportional to T. Let's get rid of the proportional sign. We can therefore say that P is equal to a constant k, it could be any variable you can put there, times by t. Okay, right, so well, this means that the constant is the same everywhere along that line. The constant is the same everywhere along that line. So let's just say that if we had, this is the original temperature, T1, yes? And this is the pressure originally is P1, yes? So T1 stands for initial temperature, P1 stands for initial pressure. And let's say you were to increase the temperature over here, this one's going to be T2, and the pressure will be P2 over here. Right, because we have this relationship, pressure is equal to a constant times by the temperature, yeah? Therefore, we notice that the constant will remain the same at this point and this point. And obviously, that's the reason why it's called a constant. So if you were to put P1 is equal to K times by T1 over here, this point over here, and this point over here is going to be P2 is equal to K times by T2 over here. Right, don't forget the constant is the same for both of them. So rearranging the this one over here, P1 divided by T1 is therefore equal to, and rearranging K, and therefore this one as well is going to be P2 divided by T2 is now equal to K as well. That constant is the same for both of them. The constant here is the same as the constant there. And therefore, finally, because you know the constant is the same for both of them, you can then equate both of them together. So therefore, we can say that P1 over T1 is equal to 
P2 divided by T2. So we have this relationship now as well. Okay, let's test our understanding with the following question. The pressure inside a car tire is 6.10 times by 10 to the power of 10 Pascal when the temperature is 280 K. After the car has made a journey, the temperature of the air in the tire is 300 K. Calculate the new pressure in the tire, assuming the volume remain constant. Okay, so the first thing I would say is first of all, identify what you've been given. P1, P2, T1 and T2. So P1 is going to be the initial pressure, which is 6.10 times by 10 to the power of 10. The final pressure, uh, we don't know what that is, so we're trying to work that out. The initial temperature is 280K. Yes, the final temperature is going to become is 300K. Yes, then we're going to take this and rearrange it to make P2 the subject. So P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And then from here, all, you, all I'm going to do is I'm going to move the T2 upwards over here. So P2 is equal to P1 over T1 and the top line times by T2 over here. Right, let's all plug it in now. So P2, the final pressure is initial one, 6.10 times by 10 to the power of 10 times by the final temperature, which is 300K over here, divided by T1, the initial one of 280. I'm going to get the following value, guys. It's going to be equal to 6.54 times by 10 to the power of 10 Pascal. Easy stuff here. And there we go. That's how you do it. That's one example of using that formula here over here. Make sure you brush up on your algebra in order to rearrange that to make different quantities of the subject of the formula. And that's it, guys, for another session of Surrazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to keep my channel going. And good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.